What's up, y'all? Back again, your angle. You know, honored to have Gigi they tell me, aka Emilio, aka Baby Jesus. Thank you for coming on board with Thank us. You. Thank you for inviting. Hey, Gigi, before we get going, tell us about this wall, man. This is special. I don't know. I just came here. I found it and it was very nice. No, I'm joking. This is <laughs> the fruit of uh, my insomnia after night and uh, all my favorite singers and uh, guitar player and also some favorite singer of Camila, my girlfriend and uh, Nathan, I didn't like all this empty space right. and then uh, put it something now I started to like all of this one empty space again and maybe I put John Lennon John yeah, Lennon, that's dope, yeah I've been here a couple of times man it always catches me off guard to see this but man, it's, the, you know, it's kind of like who you are as a person, man, you're like a, I call you a hippie in our time, but I wish I was. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time and I do sports so I can't angle, handle with that life. But I have a lot of respect really for the culture and yeah. for the music that came out from that age. Definitely. But trust me, in drawing, I'm very bad. It's really just a matter of uh, patience, this and, uh, and time, because I, I take a page, I yeah. put squares on it, and then I redo it square by square uh, in, por in proportion. So I just need time and patience. Trust me, I'm not good in drawing, but when you see this, you say, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah it's, it's incredible. Yeah. I always say Well, I'm not, but it's, yeah, I like it. For my house, I like it. That's good. Hey, um, GT, can you tell the folks about your, your basketball path? This was my 14 year like a professional. Mm. And uh, nothing, I started because my father is still um, the president of a little um, club, a club in my hometown in Sardinia. And I was always one of the best of my ages, first in Sardinia, then also in Italy. Uh, and then when I was 16, I tried to, um, to act professional, to try to be professional, I went in Siena. And uh, I was practicing with a, a top team, it was a high, very high level team. That team reached the Final Four in 2004. And of course I was only practicing with them. Uh, but it was a good test for me to see where I was at the time and uh, uh, to, to feel that I maybe could reach that level. And then uh, a lot of things happened. Uh, I started to play at Siena, in Siena when I was 18. Um, I saw in minutes, I don't know, 15, 18 minutes per game. Uh, then the year after, I couldn't find space. Also because Siena was a very good team, they won the championship uh, that year. So I moved, I moved in a lower level team, always in Italy, in Scafati, always in uh, first division, to, to find space, you know, to stay on the court, make mistakes, to grow up like a player, to make some, uh, put some experience. And also to show that I, what I can do on, um, on more minutes on the court. Mm -hmm. Um, after that, I went to Rome. Uh, Rome was a serious club. Pudi Roga was the general manager. Uh, there was a lot of uh, very important players. Uh, Brandon Jennings was coming from uh, okay, yeah, high school, and they decided to come overseas instead to go to college before getting ready for NBA. Uh, Sunny Mechiovic, a Euro champion with coach Obradovic, uh, was the Primus Bredzets NBA player for several years. Rodrigo de la Fuente was 10 years in Barcelona. It was a very, very good team. And uh, I found my spot. Uh, I was a, a rotation guy. And, uh, and I stayed five years in Rome. But year after year, uh, the budget was lower. So the ambitions was lower. And uh, automatically also my role was bigger, was bigger, was bigger. And uh, the last year was the best season because we really put the team together just to stay in the uh, first division. But then it was an incredible team, a lot of young guys really angry to play. Um, some veterans were Phil Goss, Bobby, the, um, Bobby also had, a, had an incredible uh, part of that locker room. And, uh, Nothing, we, we just made incredible year, we reached the final, I reached the final and I was the MVP of the league. Uh, so, just one year before that, I didn't know if to stay in Rome or go somewhere else in Italy, and a year after that, NBA teams were looking for me, so it was something incredible. Then I tried the NBA experience, uh, because it was something that you always dream, especially here. Um, 
and I stayed two years and I tried in these two years to, to show that I can belong also to that level. It was too rough here because in Detroit I had really a lot of DMPs, a lot of inactive, a lot of few meals, a lot of garbage time, also some uh, the, uh, the league games. Then uh, finally in Boston arrived the, the real opportunity and we reached the playoff. I was a role player, I had uh, some minutes on the team, that's why when I think about the NBA, uh, the best memories are about uh, those months in Boston. Uh, great teammates, great coaching staff, uh, and I'm very happy of all the success that they are having um, year after year. And uh, after that, uh, I wanted to see um, what was uh, their interest that I um, uh, drawn the, or in uh, NBA or uh, here in Europe and when Fenerbahce called me to be a part uh, of uh, an ambitious program to be coached by Jericho to, to try to win Euroleague and to play in Istanbul in such an important uh, club it was an easy choice to me because also I miss playing basketball to have uh, responsibilities and uh, that's why I'm here. Greatness. How do you like playing for Abrado? Where would you rank him amongst all your coaches? Oh, for sure. If I say that he's the best coach I've ever had, uh, I think nobody will uh, will take it personal. Um, okay, everybody says he's the best because of what he won. For me, he's the best, first of all, because he knows how to relate to players. He you know when to push, when to chill, how to treat people. Um, and then he's never satisfied. It's incredible for me that uh, he's a living legend and uh, still is the most um, unsatisfied in the gym. He, all, he always looks for perfection, he always pushes players, he always defends his players. And uh, it's very funny to play, uh, really fun to play for him. He's uh, one of those coaches that you just listen to him and then you, you know you're going to be in good shape if you, if you do what he asked for you and uh, I think uh, playing for him for to such a high level this is a level that I always watch when I was in Italy uh, like a very high level I always watch Final Four playoffs and now to be a part of it is uh, something big for me and to be uh, one of these, uh, these players is something really really big for me. Let's change it up man because um, you love to read I still I've seen the books. I appreciate that, you know, being a fellow book reader. What are your top five books? Well, you should tell me yesterday, maybe I have to <laughs> think about it. Okay, for sure. Uh, no, uh, recently somebody else uh, asked me this, so maybe I have an idea. Uh, for sure, uh, number one, Shant Shantaram. Did you read it? No. It's a big yeah, book. Yeah. It's a thousand page book, but I, trust me, when you finish, you think, already like yeah. it's such an amazing book uh, uh, you, have to, you have to read it yes you have to read about this guy uh, autobiography but romance um, escaped from prison in uh, Australia I guess and uh, reborn basically in India uh, helping the poor people to survive because he has some notions of being a doctor but he, he look like a, a magician to this mm -hmm. uh, to this kid and then uh, get into the criminality in, in India to survive. Uh, there is a love story. There is uh, talk about India that I never been. Uh, I would like to to visit one day. Uh, such a full book of everything, love, uh, kind of war. In the second book, because also came out the second book. Uh, but let's go. If I don't want to talk <laughs> too much. Uh, I like. Uh, I love also life from this guy, Keith Richards. <laughs> uh, it's the biography of. One of the main uh, rock star uh, ever, Keith Richards, a guitar player of the Rolling Stones. So many stories about his crazy life. <laughs> I mean, he's 70 years old, he's still yeah. rocking. I've been at uh, their concert in, uh, in Rome in 2014, and they're a group of 70 year old friends, <laughs> rock like crazy, yeah, nice. incredible life. And uh, incredible art artists, of course. So he talks about how he grew up with the music, what music he listened to, what he tried to do. And uh, I always loved his character, so reading his autobiography was a must. Then, uh, I gotta, gotta put, if not all this is one of Harry Potter books, mm -hmm. since now I'm, I can say, best friend with uh, <laughs> <laughs> J.K. Rowling. Shout out to J.K. Rowling. Yeah, for sure she's watching. <laughs> Hello, JK. Uh, no, I, that's how I started to 
fell in love, fell in love with reading. Um, I was, I don't know, I think 11, 12, and these books just make me stay awake all the night. And, uh, and I love them. I read it and reread it and watch the book and the movies. So I must put them in the in the top five. And um, then let me think. Um, Il Conte di Monte Cristo is a um, in English I would say Monte Cristo Conte. I don't know the translation uh, to take uh, to look it up. It's from Dumas. It's a classical of uh, French literature, and um, I think it's beautiful. It's one of the books that you read. It's, it's another pen. It's a different pen, a different mm -hmm. human being, and uh, very well written, very nice story. Basically, it's one guy that got. Uh, fooled, let's say, and then he, he planned an incredible uh, ben vendict, bandit, I say. What, vendetta? Vendetta, yes, an incredible vendetta to uh, at years after years with a lot of patience, but it's incredible, well, uh, well written. And uh, pa -pa -pa, another one, the fifth. Let's go ahead and then I tell you at the end of the interview. Oh, okay. Talk about the the streets of Istanbul. What's your favorite part about this city? Uh, there are different. Every time I go across the bridge is breathtaking and uh, during the day and during the night is it's incredible. It's an incredible angle of the world. Uh, but my favorite place where to see it have a, a coffee is uh, Karakoy. Karakoy in those streets where there are a lot of pubs close to the other. And uh, Ege, uh, the guy who worked with us, uh, uh, call it hipsterland. Yes, yeah, that's, that's definitely your area. <laughs> so that's why maybe I like it. But it's uh, a lot of people from, um, you, you don't see a lot of tourists there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's a place um, uh, appreci appreciated also from the local play, uh, people. So I think it's, uh, it's worth it to go, to go there and have a little taste of Istanbul, the real Istanbul. Uh, but uh, if you want to go back, I don't know, 100 years ago, you have to have a walk in Barat, which uh, is one of the, my favorite places in Istanbul. And then look like the time stopped in, I don't know, really 100 years ago. Uh, there are a few cars, uh, um, people are more conservative there. Uh, the buildings, uh, the streets, uh, you can really feel that you are uh, in another time and uh, every time I have people who don't want to see the classical thing, I don't know, the uh, Galata Tower, uh, Sultanament or Blue Mosque, I bring them then, there because it's worth it to see something uh, for me very particular. It's uh, UNESCO Patrimonio, how do you say in English? UNESCO take care of these <coughs> places and uh, to, to make sure that they're gonna stay uh, healthy and oh, uh, yeah, UNESCO, like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, I don't know, don't talk. Yeah, UNESCO, I, I, that's what it's called. UNESCO. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's part of that, yes. Okay, that is good. Well, thank you, Gigi. But before we leave, I gotta ask you, what would you give advice to young basketball players, young hipsters? What would you tell them on this path of life? Don't do sports. <laughs> 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 Do something else. No, no, I'm joking. Um, first of all, they have to be honest with themselves and understand if they can be professional or not. I think you have to do it in a certain way only if you going to be professional. Uh, if not, you can still play basketball for fun and doing something else in, uh, in life. Uh, but to be for sure to practice every day, to do something, to play it, to work hard, of course, everybody say that, but it's true. And um, I think you agree with that. And without work, all the, also the best players in the world, they're not that talented without uh, hard work. And that's what I think. But to be to, to sure to be ambitious, ambitious, to be brave, to show character, to show love for the game. And uh, that for sure gonna help you to be the best player as you can. And then uh, have fun also when you don't have fun anymore, just do something else. That's what I think at the end of the day. Thank you. Hey man. Don't let me go. I almost did because I had to go back to the table. But thank y'all for tuning in with me and my guy Gigi. Thank you.